Ooh, look at this. Still sealed in the package for at least 33 years. Audio amplifier goodness. Let's take a look. This is the LM1877 dual channel audio amplifier IC. So you can make a stereo amplifier with this thing. A friend gave these to me. I was up at his place and um, he got these years ago and he had no use for them so he gave me a few of them. Actually a bunch of other Radio Shack parts. Radio Shack, you know, they had closeouts on things, marked them down, and he bought a bunch of things many, many years ago. And this LM1877 chip, they started carrying in the late 70s, and last showed up in the 1983 catalog, which was, you know, released previous summer, so 1982 usually in August of the previous year. And it didn't show up in the next catalog, so these were discontinued sometime in 1982 or early 1983, so you know, these things have been sealed up here in a brand new in a package for 33 or more years. I don't know their date code, so I can't tell you. Well, the LM... 1877 started out as LM377 and I don't know what happened I don't know if there was a minor improvement made or they just renamed them sometimes uh, National Semiconductor uh, renamed some of their parts but sometime in the mid 70s they decided to call it the LM1877 and it's what I call a second generation chip because it has the built-in thermal protection and short circuit protection internally compensated so uh, yeah it's, it's a pretty neat little chip let's uh, take a look at it we'll do all the measurements and all that good stuff and uh, take a look at the data sheet here is the data sheet. 2 watt per channel amplifier. Has a wide supply voltage range. I'm sure that 2 watts is at the higher voltages. And of course I'll take measurements. If you want to read this stuff just pause the video. Here is the pinout. Typical circuit here. Notice the negative feedback is external. So you select the resistance ratio of these resistors here to set the gain. Has high input impedance, so do it yourself guitar amp makers. Take note, you can make a little battery powered guitar amplifier out of this. With somewhat more output capability than an LM386. This chip is still available but it's in surface mount so it stood the test of time of course a lot of parts now that were through hole are being discontinued and some with you know has good popularity still has good popularity have gone surface mount you can probably still find old stock through holes that you can you know it's easier for the do-it-yourselfer to use Okay, well, I'm going to crack one of these chips open. I got three of them. Crack one of them open, set it up in a circuit, listening test, and all the other measurements I do. So, stay tuned. Well, I cracked one of these bad boys open. Hooked it up on the circuit board here, breadboard. Kind of busy. Got two channels to deal with, so there's fair amount of components there. So I have it hooked up to the music player and we'll give it a quick listening test.
No problem with the sound. Sounds good to me. Of course, the camera doesn't record stereo, and it's pretty well compressed dynamically. But by ear, sounds very good. It's nice having crisp drum beats and everything. Not being compressed like today's modern music with the loudness wars and all that. But yeah, amplifier sounds pretty good. I'm going to hook it up and get some power measurements. Now first, before the power test, let's take a look at the distortion. We are clipping a little bit. Let me turn that off. This is the uh, spectrum analyzer. You see all those harmonics. The second harmonic slow, odd harmonic pretty high, but that's just clipping. Let me turn, take it out of clipping, and it pretty much cleans up. And a tiny little bump there. Let me turn that up. That's as high as we go. So yeah, it's uh, pretty clean. Of course, that's our fundamental one kilohertz tone right there. I wasn't sure how well this is going to work because I can't really do proper grounds on this type of board. I'd have to etch a board and hook it up that way and get proper grounding and everything like I always talk about in my videos, but it's even on that board, it's doing pretty well. Okay, now I'll go on with the power test. I use this function generator as the power test. This has too much distortion for doing a distortion test. This distortion from this is very, very low. But using this for the power test allows me to use its... Uh, potentiometer to fine-tune the the waveform which I can't do with the music player and you see that little notch at the top that's from this this thing always does that it's not any instability or anything with the chip looks like we're starting to clip on the bottom waveform I'll tune that out. I'm getting 1.68 volts. Let's see what that is. I had to go find my calculator here. 1.68 squared divided by 8 ohms. 0.3528. Now that is with the power supply at 9 volts. This chip is really meant for higher voltages, so we're not going to get an optimum output at this level. And yeah, that's uh, pretty pitiful, really, for 9 volts. 8 ohm loads, I would expect to get 0 0.6, 0 0.75 or so. But again, that chip's not optimized for a low voltage use like that. Okay, I'm, I also want to try it at 12 volts and see what it'll put out. Okay, I have some more power measurements. If I didn't mention before, it's both channels driven with 8 ohm loads. Maximum clean power before clipping. So, you know, it's a nice clean signal, no distortion. Again, at 9 volts it was 0.353 watts. 12 volts it went up to 0.865. And 15 volts... 1.47 about a watt and a half of clean power at 15 volts and that's as, really as high as I can take it using this board it doesn't really have a proper heat sinking so I really can't go any higher but you know if you go higher like 18 volts you should be able to get a little over two watts of clean power per channel just make sure you do add a heat sink at lower voltages, it's really not putting out a decent amount of power. It's just not optimized, like I say. You know, at 12 volts, 8 ohm loads, I'd like to see 1 watt or 1.2 watts of clean power. So, you know, it's not quite there. Some other measurements I've taken. The minimum 
supply voltage. Well, it says 6 volts, but it went under 5 volts, down to 4.5 volts before it started to cut out. So it does work on pretty low voltages. Quiescent current, that just means the amp is powered up with no output signal. And it was drawing 6 milliamps at a 9 volt supply and 8 milliamps at 15 volts. So the uh, quiescent current is pretty low. It would be a good amplifier to use with batteries. And here's some more information on the back of the Radio Shack card if you want to see that. It says 26 volts max. Well, the data sheet says 24, so a little discrepancy there. Well, that's the review and test of the LM1877. It's a uh, decent chip. It sounds good. It's not a powerhouse or anything. It doesn't put strong power out at lower voltages. You can bridge it for more power. If you want to use it with 9 volts, you could bridge it into uh, you know, an 8 ohm load and get uh, probably close to one and a half watts or so, something like that. Thanks again for watching.